Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1982 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is between the Detroit Tigers and the New York Yankees at Yankee Stadium. On the mound for Detroit is Dave Rosma, whose record is 2-1 with a 2.67 ERA. And pitching for the Yankees today is Milt Wilcox, whose record is 3-1 with a 4.11 ERA. All right, we had a nice victory yesterday, uh, getting back on the winning side. We won 6-2, to two, and maybe today we can get out of New York and uh, win the series. We're going to have to get past our old teammate, Milt Wilcox, who we traded over to the Yankees last season. In return, we received uh, Reggie Jackson, uh, among others. And so maybe we can... Uh, we have Reggie in the lineup today. Maybe we can have Reggie uh, do some damage against his old team today. In fact, I'll show you what I did with the lineup as we get going here. Let's go ahead and get started today. As always, I appreciate everyone following along. Like and or subscribe if you enjoy this content. Um, also, I mentioned, I think, earlier that um, coming up, I believe, on Friday, so two days away, I will be opening two... Uh, wax packs of 1982 Flair baseball cards. I'm really excited for that. It's it's a, a treat to open up cards that are 40 years old. So we're going to have our time travel Tuesday, but we're going to do it on Friday anyway, where we open up uh, older uh, packs and boxes of cards. At the end of this video, I'll have a link over here on the right side where you can click on uh, the time travel Tuesday playlist to take a look at any of the uh, other uh, videos that I've made of older uh, pack breaks and box breaks of, of all sports. They're all mixed together there. So today, uh, we have Dave Roseman on the mound. As you can see, the Yankees have crushed him. Uh, they're betting 342 against him with a 513 slugging percentage. Uh, we have all of our bullpen available except Keith Comstock, who stepped up with a couple innings uh, yesterday. Uh, did a good job in the victory. And let's take a look at the lineup. A crazy lineup today. We have to give uh, Andre Dawson the day off. He was listed as tired, so we gave him the day off. And so we're going to put Reggie Jackson in right field, making his first start in right field in two seasons. Now, he did start two games for us last year in left field. But this will be his first start in, in uh, right field in two years. Uh, John Mayberry in there at DH. And uh, the rest of the lineup, uh, you, you, I'm sure you'll recognize. So let's go ahead and do the official lineup rundown here where you can take a look at the stats to date. We have leading off and playing second base today, Sweet Lou Whitaker. Switch over from the fielding stats. Batting second. At first base is Greg Brock. Batting third at third base is Mickey Hatcher. Batting cleanup in center field is Ricky Henderson. Batting fifth in right field today is Reggie Jackson. Batting sixth and catching is Lance Parrish. And batting seventh and DHing, John Mayberry. Batting 8th in left field is Kirk Gibson. And finally, batting ninth at shortstop is Alan Trammell. Here's Milt Wilcox. Look at how he's doing as a New York Yankee. He's 9-4 overall since his trade at the deadline last year. Uh, he's 3-1 with that 4-11 ERA. 20 Ks and 30 innings pitched. Opponents are batting 283 against him. Uh, no complete games this year. He had one as a Yankee. He had a shutout as a Tiger last year where he went 2-2 two and two for us. Uh, but he was expendable because he was going to a free agency. And he re-signed with the Yankees for a couple extra seasons there. Fastball tops out around 87 miles an hour. So he's a soft tosser, much like uh, Rosma. Ground balls around 46%, which is average. Fastballs is best pitch, uh, which he must command pretty well no not really only 75 rating there so i'm not sure why his fastball is so good at 85 i mean that's he should be able to clock that ball uh he's got a slurve and a knuckle curve 
which are um, below average. So here is the defensive alignment for the Yankees, same as the first two games of the series. And now we have Sweet Lou leading off against Bill Wilcox. This is the first time uh, we faced each other, I believe, as Sweet Lou flies into left center field. Did we face Wilcox in the first series? No, we did not. That's right. He's the number four starter on this team. So we did not see Milt in the opening series at home. There's one down. Next up is Greg Brock. And Brock slaps the base at the center field. First hit of the game for the Tigers. We're not going to try to turn two. We turned it to a double. So as I mentioned, Bill Wilcox is their fourth starter. The, uh, the uh, Yankees have yet to go to a five-man rotation. So their fifth starter is uh, Ed Figueroa, and he has yet to get into any game this season. So I tried to hit and run, and the pitch was so high and so slow, Hatcher didn't even bother to swing, and Brock, of all people, gets his first stolen base of the season. So he's in scoring position now for Hatcher. We're just going to have him swing away now. And he hits it to the shortstop. That is the one bag you do not want to hit to. So Brock holds it second. And we have Ricky Henderson in the cleanup spot for the second time this year. And he walks. So we're trying to get, try to take advantage of his uh, on-base average. Uh, he doesn't hit so well, but his uh, on-base average is pretty solid. And then we have Reggie facing his old team. Hits a line drive right to Doyle at short, and that'll do it. So we go to the bottom of the first. Here is the lineup for the Yankees. Let's go. There we go. Batting leadoff, playing second base. Willie Randolph. Batting second in left field is Don Reynolds. Batting third at first base is Don Mattingly. Batting cleanup and DHing is first, I'm um, sorry, is uh, Dennis Worth. Batting fifth and catching is Ron Hassey. Batting sixth in right field is Claudel Washington. Batting seventh at third base is Joe Lafave. Batting eighth in center field is Lee Mazzilli. And batting ninth at shortstop is Brian Doyle. Here's Rosie. Two and one record, making his sixth start. ERA is pretty low, 267, career best so far. 11 K is in 33 innings pitch. We know that's not what he does. Uh, he's has eight walks in 33 innings pitch. He's not much of a walker, but um, he's had a few more than normal. Opponents are only batting 203 against him, and uh, no complete games so far this year. Keeping in mind, in real life, he went 3 and 0 in um, in 1982, and then he suffered that knee injury that ended his season. So. We're, we're already getting more starts out of him than he had in real life in 1982. There is the defensive alignment for the Tigers today. And take a look at uh, Reggie Jackson out there in right field. A 71 rating. Not great. We're just hoping that uh, he can make a couple plays. And uh, we'll bring in a defensive replacement later on with Glenn Wilson. Willie Randolph leading off, hits a line drive right at Hatcher, who's had some defensive uh, issues lately, but he makes the play there. There's one down. Next up is Don Reynolds, and Rosie strikes out Reynolds. It's going to bring up Don Mattingly, and uh, I just want to make a note uh, that uh, Don Mattingly, this baseball card here from the 1982 Columbus Clippers, I just saw earlier today this baseball card is going for like $45 on a Mercari. I was thinking about maybe picking it up just to have it in my collection uh, to also commemorate this season that we're simming here as Mattingly hits a ground ball to third. And a 1-2-3 inning for Rosie. We go to the top of the second. We've got Parrish, Mayberry, and Gibson do up. Parrish wears one right in the hip. Maybe uh, Wilcox has something against his old battery mate. Because he jammed him up with a 84 mile an hour fastball that I mean perish. Big Wheel just swats it away. No big deal there. 
John Mayberry up next. He continues to hit well. Base hit up the middle. That'll get his average up to a 286. So my my platoon of Jackson and Mayberry has actually been pretty decent so far. Here's Gibby. Nobody out. And runners on first and second. Gibson strikes out swinging. And our hero from yesterday, Alan Trammell, had two home runs, and he gaps this one left center field. It's 430 feet all the way to the wall. Parrish scores. Mayberry stops at third. And Trammell has himself an RBI double. So he had a, a double dong yesterday and a double today. 1-0 Detroit. Sweet lose up. We're going to go on contact with that slow-mo on uh, third. Gibson, I'm sorry, Whitaker hits a ground ball to short. And Mayberry goes home and scores. So an RBI for Whitaker. Trammell holds it second. And it'll be up to Greg Brock to get that third run in. And this time he takes a strike three looking. So Tigers put two on the board. RBI double from Trammell. And a uh, force out by uh, Whitaker. So... 2-0 Detroit. Dennis Worth leading off bottom of the second. Worth with his 148 batting average. Grounds out to short. One down. I bet they wish they had Reggie Jackson right now in that DH role. As uh, MVP, Ron Hassey grounds out to short. And then the 1980 MVP of the National League, Claude L. Washington, smacks it back up the middle for a base hit. First hit against Rosie. Next up is Joe Lefave. A little nubber back to Rosma, and Rosma tosses him out. We go to the top of the third with Mickey Hatcher up, then Henderson and Red Jay. Hatcher bloops it into right center field, tracked down by Washington. One out. Next is Ricky. Ricky three for 11 against Wilcox. I guess all of that would have been with uh, the A's. Here he flies out to short right field. It's going to be up to Reggie to get something going. Reggie rips it to right. It's going to fall. Oh, it's going to be caught by Washington. I thought that was going to just fall in front of Washington's glove. No such luck. We go to the bottom of the third. It's 2 0 Detroit. Here's Lee Mazzilli leading off. Mazzilli, I don't know if you, uh, uh, hopefully everyone got a chance to watch the 30 for 30 on the uh, 86 Mets. Uh, they talked about Lee Mazzilli uh, getting traded to the Yankees. And then, of course, that baseball card you just saw, uh, Mazzilli, uh, was then uh, traded to the Rangers. So they mentioned the uh, Yankee trade as part of the uh, rebuild of the Mets that formed that 1986 Hopefully, um, Freddie C. got a chance to uh, watch that really great 30 for 30. Back-to-back -back strikeouts after a walk to the leadoff man by Rosema. rosie has got three Ks uh, so far today as Don Reynolds steps in. And as uh, Don T. mentioned uh, in the comments yesterday, Don Reynolds there ha is in uh, the um, Hawaii Islanders uniform. He was at the end of his uh, career, as we go to the top of the fourth here with Parrish leading off, he was at the end of his uh, career. He did not play another major league game after the 1979 season. But he was uh, in the San Diego minor league system. And that's why that card uh, shows him on the Islanders as uh, Parrish grounds out to third. And then Mayberry walks. So a base hit and a walk for Mayberry. What is his uh, on-base average? We missed that. 474 right now. Almost 500. Uh, that was a guy just signed to a minor league deal just for shits and giggles. And then uh, Gibby strikes out. There's two down. And next up is Trammell. Totally coming out of his slump. 
although he grounds out to shortstop to end the inning. So we go to the bottom of the fourth. Donnie Baseball leading off, betting 321 versus right-handers. Hits a ground ball back to Rosie. And Rosema tosses him out. One down. Next up, Dave. Uh, I'm sorry, Dennis Worth. Struggling. I think they would just move him down in the order. Bring your um, bring your MVP to the cleanup roll. Speaking of the MVP, Ron Hassey bloops it into a right center field. A little duck snort. Base hit. Well, runner on first, two down for Claudel Washington. And a pass ball by Parrish allows Hassey to advance. So he's in scoring position now for Washington. A ground ball up the middle, speared by Whitaker. He fires it to first for the third out. So we go to the top of the fifth. Game is moving right along. Sweet Lou leading off. Ground ball to Short, one down. Next up is Brock. We need a we need a nickname for Brock. Somebody out there, come up with something. I'm I'm all out of fresh ideas for nicknames. So if you come up with a good nickname, I will use it regularly during this uh, broadcast. There we go. Mickey Hatcher gets the base hit to right. We're not going to go for two. Hatcher had his 13-game uh, hitting streak broke, and then uh, now he's got two games in a row, so he's back at it. And then Henderson strikes out. So we go to the bottom of the fifth. Seven, eight, nine, and do up. Lefave, Mazzilli, and Doyle. Not a bad seven, eight, and nine when they're batting 354 with seven home runs, like Joe Lefave. He falls out into a third base territory. Lee Mazzilli up next. He's got a 284 batting average. Popping it up to short. And then Doyle, who always crushes us, is batting 300. Oh, and Rosemo walks him just below the strike zone. Somehow Doyle laid off. And we roll it over to Willie Randolph, who grounds out to first. And another scoreless inning by the Yankees. We go to the top of the sixth. Let's take a look at the in-game stats. Player of the game so far, maybe Trammell. Uh, it's hard not to give it to Mayberry, but at least Trammell's driven a run in. So we may give it to him. At this point last year, Trammell was uh, the team MVP with the most uh, uh, player of the game votes as Jackson flies out to left center field. But yesterday, Trammell just got his first vote, and we're almost through the first month of the season. One down with Parrish stepping up, and that play is made by Mazzilli in center. Mayberry, three for six against Milt, and he rips it into left center field all the way to the wall, and Mayberry... Hustles into second. You don't see him get a lot of doubles. That is his first double of the season. And the first double in a couple of years. He did he did not even play last year. And he's batting 310 right now for Detroit. Milt officially tired at 101 pitches here. We're not even through six. Let's see if Gibby could knock in Mayberry. Ah, ground ball to third. Oh, and the uh, gold glover. Lefave boots it. Everybody's safe. And a chance here for Trammell to extend the lead. A walk. That's going to do it. They're yanking him out of there now. So Milt, we chase from the ball game. And they're going to bring in Rags. Dave Raggetti. Fifth appearance this season. 1-2, 352 ERA. Give it up 10 hits in seven and two thirds innings. That's a 313 batting average. No saves. He was the longtime closer for the uh, Yankees, but he did begin his career as a starter, as you can see here. And he pitched a 
no hitter in real life. So um, it's a pretty solid pitcher. Now, did he face us in the first series? He did, and we scored against him both times. So and he took the loss both times. So let's see if we can't uh, add to that misery. Lefty on lefty though with Sweet Lou, and oh, he gets a hold of it. I thought he was going to strike him out. A long fly ball into left center field, but that's not going to get it done. So we go to the bottom of the sixth. Rosie hanging in there. The third time through the lineup now. With Don Reynolds leading off, and he walks him. Youch. Three walks and three Ks. And we've got a bunch of lefties due up. What should we do here? I think we got to go against Mattingly. And then face Worth, and then we got to bring in a lefty at that point. Nice, nicely done by Rosma, striking out Donnie Baseball. That's four Ks. Let's turn two right here and get this over with. Oh, that's a fly ball to right field. Play is made by the right fielder, Reggie. So, yeah, we have lefties coming up, and uh, Hassey is batting 357 versus... All righty. So we're going to bring in uh, Cappy, who um, we've already thrown him into five games since uh, being called up. His ERA is at a 159. Four Ks, no walks yet. Opponents are betting 261, so pretty solid. This is what the 1982 uh, Fleer baseball cards look like. Horrendous, ugly, ugly cards. Uh, I can't wait to open them when they get here. Here's Ron Hassey then facing Cappy and a fly ball into right center field. And the play is easily made by Reggie. So uh, we will get maybe see Reggie one more time and then we're going to bring in uh, Greg, not Greg Brock, uh, Glenn Wilson as Greg Brock is the batter. Another lefty on lefty, but Brock's betting 250 right now versus left-handers as he grounds out to first. There's one down. And then Mickey Hatcher, who's crushing lefties. There we go. Base hit down the right field line. Falls in for a single. I guess that wasn't more uh, in into the field of play than it was down the line. So we have Hatcher at first with Ricky up. Now, Ricky does not hit lefties well. I, I think we should hit and run here. Let's try to get him moving. Henderson, not a great hit and run. Uh, batter as he taps it back to Rigetti. Hatcher moves up, so we stay out of the double play. And this will be the last at bat for Reggie, who does not have a hit versus lefties this year. And he will not get one here. So we go to the bottom of the seventh, and as I said, Reggie's coming out, Wilson's going in. Uh, a definitely a superior defender, an 89. That's his best position. Um, I think he does have an error out there already this season. No, he's never had an error in his career. He says, as he knows, that's jinxing everything. And now we have uh, some lefties coming up. We're going to let Cappy get through one more inning here. He's only thrown three pitches. Facing Claudel, and Claudel rips it to right, pulls it into right field for a base hit. And now Joe Lefebvre is batting 625. That's that's no joke. That's a few base hits at least. Pops it up. Carrying into center field. Plays made by Henderson, one down. And then Mazzilli hits lefties well. Now, will the Yankees try to steal second base? Oh, he's picked off. It doesn't matter. Cappy saw him napping at first. And he picks him off. That was a bad play by the Yankees. Now I don't feel so bad about him facing Mazzilli. As Mazzilli floats it into right center field. And that's going to do it. We go to the top of the eighth. Good job there. Good job. We have Lance do up with Mayberry and Gibby following. Parrish popping it up on the infield, carrying to the outfield grass behind second base. One down. Here's John Mayberry. Two for two on the day with a walk. 
And they finally get him, get him out as he grounds out to uh, shortstop. It's going to leave it up to Gibby to get a two-out rally going, and he takes strike three looking as Rags paints the corner. So we go to the bottom of the eighth. We have a lefty and two righties do up. Now this is really getting to uh, the point where I should not throw uh, Cappy, but we're going to go one more batter and an infield single. Yep, okay, I should have known better. So we take him out, and we're going to bring in, uh, I guess we're bringing in Kerrigan, right? So he's our setup, our eighth inning right-handed guy. There we go. And he's done a pretty solid job. There, it took a minute there to think about it. 15th appearance. He's already had more appearances than last season, and we're barely out of the first month. We may have to, well, we can't send him down because we signed him to a minor league deal. So he's got to stay in the major league roster. So we're gonna we're gonna keep him till he breaks. And this might be the time. Runner on first, nobody out. Here's Willie Randolph. Rips it to right field. Goes Oppo on a line. And Glenn Wilson, thank goodness he was out there, not Reggie. Tracks it down against the wall. There's one down. Next up is Don Reynolds, striking him out on a rising fastball. They say there's no such thing as a rising fastball. But that looked like one right there. And now we've got a bunch of lefties. Now we cannot let Kerrigan face Mattingly, right? We can't do that. We're, a two-run home run will tie the game. So we're going to bring in Rucker, who is the man. And he might actually close this game out. So we got Dave Rucker has not given up a earned run yet. 12 and two-thirds innings, opposed to betting 130 overall, and I'd like to show this, an 074 versus righty. So if we can get the lefty out, or if he, if he doesn't get the lefty out, we can leave him in there versus Worth. Two down, runners on first. Here's Donnie Baseball. Ground ball to third, Hatcher. Throws him out. Great job there, bullpen coming through. And here's Kurt Kaufman. Even with Goose in the bullpen, Kaufman is their closer this season. Tenth appearance, a 338 earned run average, more walks than strikeouts. He did the same last year. It was right there at the level on um, in 1980. So he's got six saves this season, no blowies. Uh, 95 mile an hour fastball, a 96 rating on that fastball. That is impressive, yet he's only got four Ks, so... He has not harnessed the power of the fastball. Trammell leading off, 0 for 2 in his career against Kaufman, and a ground ball back to the pitcher. One down. Next up is Sweet Lou. Lou strikes out an inside pitch. He's gonna leave up to Greg Brock. And he walks Brock. Runner on first then for Hatcher. Two for four on the day for Hatcher. Another solid outing. And he lifts a fly ball into center field. And that'll do it. So we're going to the bottom of the ninth. And I'm going to follow my own advice. And I'm going to leave Rucker in there to get Worth. Who we know is a bad hitter. And Rucker crushes righties. And uh, Worth does hit Lefty's a little bit better, at least. He's batting 250 versus left-handers. Oh, crap. Base hit down the left field line. And there's a triple. Okay, that run doesn't mean anything. Let's get... Let's get... Uh, let's get these lefties out. We're going to play, uh, play back. Oh, no. Come on, Rucker. This is the... This is when he gets... Uh, he gets loose. Claudel... Ground ball to first. Let's turn two. Let that run score. Oh, no! An error by Brock in this game. Is resting in the balance on a pitcher who has lost it. So two to one. A not, not, not an earned run yet. And now we've got to guard the lines. Lefebvre batting over 500 versus lefties. This could not have gone off the rails any worse than it already has. There we go. 
striking him out. Okay, now we've got to pull the outfield in. Nothing can fall in. We should pinch run for Hassey, but they're not going to do it. They don't, they don't know the difference. All right, here we go. Sweating it out. Outfield's pulled in. One down. And a double stolen base. That makes no sense. It must have been a missed hit and run. So now we've got to intentionally walk Mazzilli to get the Doyle, who is a Tiger killer. And, um, wow, do we play to win or do we play to go to extra innings? We play to win. Let's pull the infield in. We could lose it right here, too. A base hit will score two. Let's see what happens. Ground ball to short. And they turn two to win. Whoa, that was... That was real, real tight. Tigers win two to one. Just like that, we uh, take two out of the three of the series. Let's take a look at the standings. No trade offers, of course. We separate ourselves from the Yankees another game as they fall to two and a half back with the Indians. We face next, we're headed to Cleveland to face uh, the land. Um, Kansas City still has the lead. Let's take a look at the National League just for the hell of it. St. Louis, one game lead. Houston up one and a half. Let's look at the transactions. Oh, Rocket. Well, there's a whole bunch of injuries. Two Red Sox, including Wade Boggs, out for two weeks. And the first, so first baseman and third baseman are both out for two weeks. That's, that's rough. The Cubs lose their youngster, Roger Clemens, for 36 days. He's only 19 years old, and yet in his third season, and he goes to the I.L., and Jay Baller is out for uh, two weeks. You say his ball's out. Um, let's take a look at the box score and get out of here. Tigers win 2-1. to one. Wow, who is the player of the game? I guess we have to give it to Trammell. I mean, he did uh, really knock in the only run of the game. other than I mean, Whitaker did too, but it was a ground ball out. Do we give it to Rosma for going five and two-thirds? Lowering his ERA. Rucker gets the save. I guess we're going to give it to Trammell. Uh, if you disagree, leave it in the comments. You might be able to convince me to go a, a different direction. Trammell did get a double there as well. Um, Will Wilcox takes the loss. Didn't pitch horrible. He goes to 3-2 and two on the season. So uh, that's it from Tiger Stadium. Or from a Yankee Stadium. We're going to head to Cleveland. Right over here is the... Um, Time Travel Tuesday series, if you want to take a look at any of those before we get uh, to the 1982 Flair. There's 1985 tops in there. There's 88 tops football. There's uh, 1982 tops uh, baseball in there as well. So we've already covered that. There's a bunch of good stuff in there. Uh, there's a 1989 Flair with the, um, the uh, Billy Ripken F face card in there. So there's lots of good stuff in there to watch if you uh, need more entertainment for the evening. So Anyway, until tomorrow, everyone, have a great night.